my fatigue. And you will use me during this last night of revival to feed your people. You pray, God, if it's not on my manuscript, you will put it in my mouth. Tonight, God, I would love to preach a good sermon, but I'd rather just preach a sermon than do some good. Carry someone on tonight. Challenge someone. Help someone. And we thank you in advance. It's in the name of Jesus that the blessed people of God said, Amen. Amen. Come on, help me give God a hand clap of praise on tonight. Amen. Come on, Amen. Everybody, love the Lord on tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank the worship for Amen. On the Friday night, just got paid. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let me publicly uh, say thank you to Dr. Mosley for the invitation to come and to share with you these three nights. Thank you, Hope, for your authentic worship and hospitality. I want to thank God for that praise and worship team and choirs who blessed us uh, each night. Amen. And just for the spirit of revival. Thank you. Uh, it is an honor and a privilege to be here. Amen. I want to thank God for those members of our church who will come each night in the midst of all that we have going on. Amen. We thank you so much. Amen. I was pleased to Little Max is here. Amen. Our musicians and praise worship. Amen. Leaders. Amen. Sharon's in here. Amen. My wife is here. We thank God. My son is here tonight. Amen. And Jones and our musicians. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity to come. Amen. And it's my prayer. Amen. That we be here better. Amen. Change. Uh, doesn't make sense to have all this church and be the same way we can. Amen. So it's my prayer that God will have, have said something or done something to encourage us, but not only to encourage us, that will have helped us along the way. I want to call your attention tonight to a familiar passage of scripture found in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1. I'm going to jump over a few verses uh, in the hearing, but all of it be from 1 Samuel chapter 1. Uh, and once you have 1 Samuel chapter 1, if you are physically able, we ask that you will stand with us as we read the word of God uh, together. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Once you have it, can you 1 Samuel chapter 1? I, I want to read verses 10 and 11 uh, to begin with. And if you are physically able, we ask that you will stand with us as we reverence uh, the reading of the Word of God. I'll be reading from the New International Version tonight, but I encourage you to read from whatever version you may have. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning at verse 10. If you have it, can you say amen? amen? This is the Word of God. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no reason will ever be used on his head. Jump down to verse number 19 and 20, verses 19 and 20. It says, early the next morning they arose and worshiped before the Lord. And they went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And she named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord of him. Now the last two verses jump down all the way to the end, verses 27 and 28. Verses 27 and 28. I prayed for this child. And the Lord granted me what I asked of him. So now I give to him, to the Lord, for his whole life, he'll be given to the Lord. And they worship the Lord there. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Verse 27 is really where I want to focus our attention tonight. It says, I prayed for this child. And the Lord has granted me. What I ask for. So now I give them back to you, oh God. I want to preach tonight what to do after God answers your prayer. What, what, what to do after God answers your prayers. This week we've been literally 
making prayers and requests to God. And we've even talked about how to get a prayer answered and how to get a blessing. But tonight, I want to suggest, I want to talk about what to do after God answers your prayer. Amen. Let me just say this on the outset of the sermon tonight. We serve a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. Yes, God, God answers the prayers of his people. And it sounds like I don't have to push that tonight because somebody in the sanctuary know that if it had not been for God answering your prayers, somebody else be sitting in your seat. It, it, it been somebody else. If it wasn't for God answering your prayers, you wouldn't even be here tonight. And after all the stuff that could have happened, should have happened, and probably would have happened, but the reason you're here is not because you've been so good, not because you're so strong. It's because the Lord answered your prayer. We serve a prayer. And I wish I had a witness in this place. Y'all sound like y'all already ready to have church. Here it is. But just in case you don't want to take my word for it, all you have to do is go with me to our text. And there's a sister by the name of Hannah who can testify that God is a prayer answering God. Yeah. Y'all, you know, she had a life full of bitterness, but God turned her bitterness into a blessing all because he answered her prayer. And if Hannah was here today, she would tell you that prayer works. Yes, God answers prayer. Bible lets us know that her life was completely changed all because God answered her prayer. Yeah. Well, let me give you the context so you understand the content. Bible lets us know that there was a brother by the name of Elkanah. And Elkanah, y'all, in that day had two wives. One wife was named Hannah. The other wife was named Penina. Some pronounce it Penina. However you pronounce it, it's all right with me. Here it is. Uh, Elkanah had two wives. And church, before you throw Elkanah under the bus, just remember, in that day, it was okay. And, and, and that day, polygamy was legal, but I must throw this out there, even though it was legal, but anywhere in scripture where a brother had two wives, it was always some drama. Amen. Everywhere in scripture, everybody who had two wives, it was always some drama, and it didn't work. Such is the case in our text. Elkanah had two wives, and he had a whole lot of drama going on. The Bible says that every year they would go up to Shiloh to worship, and before he went to worship, Elkanah would do something with every man should do. He would bless his home. He would make sure that his wives and his household had what they needed. The Bible says he would give one wife a portion, but to Hannah he would give a double portion. Now you know you're going to start some trouble when you give one wife more than you give the other. Come on, help me appreciate this, but here it is. And, and you really going to have some trouble when you give the one without children more than you give the one with children. The Bible lets us know that the reason he blessed Hannah with more than he gave Penina is because he loved her more. But not only did he love her more, Elkanah felt sorry for Hannah because the Bible says she was barren and she could not have any children. So here it is, year after year, when Whenever he go up to worship, he would give Hannah more than he gave Penina. And this really upset Penina. And y'all, Penina was mean somebody because she would brag and she would throw it in Hannah's face because Hannah could not have children. She was barren. And Hannah, Penina would be mean. She's already upset that she can't give her husband a child. But now she got to deal with the uh, uh, assault and uh, talking of Penina always throwing it up in her face. See, in that day, it was an honor for a wife to have a child uh, because she wanted somebody to carry on uh, the family name. But Hannah was barren. 
barren and she was really hurting that she could not have a son, but every day uh, Penina would throw it up in her face. Uh, uh, Hannah got so discouraged that the Bible says that she would not even eat. She was so overwhelmed, so frustrated because of Penina uh, talking bad about her uh, that, that she would not even eat. And y'all would eat without any study of this text, without even going to the commentaries. I said Hannah had to be a godly woman. Let me make my case. Uh, Hannah had to be a godly woman uh, because the other wife is constantly provoking you. Uh, the other wife is constantly saying nasty and mean things about you. And Hannah didn't even lay hands on the Lord. Uh, when I read that, I said Hannah couldn't be from Suffolk County because had that been so did the sister from Suffolk County, but neither would have needed an order of protection. I wish I had a witness in the place. Now, come on, don't act same moment now. Can any sister there come? I'm saved, but I ain't all the way to live it, and I ain't gonna go for nobody. Lord, have, have mercy. Have, have, have. But Nina kept provoking her. Uh, uh, but Hannah didn't even say nothing. The Bible says that she dealt with her pain privately. She, she dealt with it privately. But then her husband uh, would come to her year after year trying to figure out what's wrong with Hannah. He said, Hannah, uh, why are you looking like this? I don't need you to have a child. I love you just the way you are. I, I appreciate for who you are. Didn't I give you, don't I give you everything you want? But the Bible says uh, that Hannah was depressed. Uh, and I couldn't figure out, y'all, why was Penina teasing Hannah when you had more than Hannah? But if you read this story, you will discover that Penina was jealous of Hannah, y'all. Uh, y'all, she was jealous of Hannah, and it didn't make sense to me uh, because you have more than her, but why would you be jealous of her? But I've learned that there are some people who have less than you, they still jealous of you. No, they don't have witness in me, play. No matter the fact, they were happy as long as you were struggling. Uh, but as soon as God start opening doors for you, uh, then they won't get an attitude. They have everything, they, they, they have a good life, uh, and they should be happy for you. Uh, but there are some people who are jealous of you even when they have less than you. But Hannah was jealous of Hannah, and she antagonized her and antagonized her. And one day her husband came uh, and said, Honey, there's no need for you uh, to be jealous. There's no need for you to be depressed. But what Elk and I didn't understand is that Hannah had a need that material stuff could not fulfill. Yeah. Uh, Hannah had a void in her life. Uh, and one struggle that is that you can have in life is when you want to produce but can't. Uh, Hannah, y'all prayed and prayed. Uh, and she asked God to give her a son. Uh, but God didn't answer her prayer. And I struggled with this. Uh, I said, God, this is your child. Uh, why wouldn't you give Hannah a son? Uh, but then I learned uh, that God didn't answer her prayer in the beginning uh, because her prayer was about herself. Uh, she see, Hannah wanted a son, uh, not so she can please her husband. Uh, she wanted a son so she can show off to Penina. And God not going to answer prayers that give you glory and not him. No, so as long as we asking God for stuff so it can, we can get the glory, that's the prayer that God won't answer. But if you want God to answer your prayers, if you want God to open doors for you, you got to make sure that the prayer is about him getting the glory and not you. The Bible says that, that here it is, Hannah prayed, but God wouldn't answer her prayer. It wasn't until she stopped focusing focusing on Penina that God answered her prayer. But the Bible says that one day Hannah started praying and she said, Lord, if you give me a son, remember me, O God. If you give me a son, I promise I'll give him back to you. And the Bible says that one day, here it is, Hannah goes to church. She's at revival on the last night of revival and she's in church praying. She's asking God to give her a son. Asking God to answer her prayer. But God, the priest Eli is standing at the door and he's looking at Hannah constantly praying, but she's not making any noise. And when Eli saw her, Eli said, Hannah must be drunk. When Eli saw her, he saw her praying and going through all these changes and 
church. Eli said, Hannah must be drunk. But Hannah said, no, Mr. Eli, I'm not drunk. I'm just desperate for a miracle. And when you're desperate for a miracle, you're liable to do anything. Do we have a witness in this place? And I know some of y'all, that there's some people look at you while you in worship and they don't understand why you acting that way. And then they looking at you saying, something must be wrong with you. But can anybody testify? Ain't nothing wrong with me. I just need a miracle in my life. And when I need God to do something, I ain't worried about what people say about me. I ain't worried about nobody looking at me. I need God to move in my life. And I'm going to give, I wish I had a witness in here. See, some people don't get blessed because they worry about what people think. They worry about people looking at them. But when God, when you need God to do something in your life, you can talk about me all you want. You can call me crazy all you want. I need God to work a miracle in my life. Then Hannah and all, she was in church. And Hannah started acting different. But the Bible says that Eli says to Hannah, he says, Hannah, I hear you heard, overheard your prayers. And I got a word for you, Hannah. He says, go home because the Lord is going to answer your request. And the Bible says in verse 18 that immediately Hannah got up and she went home and she, y'all, her whole demeanor changed. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. And Hannah is in worship praying to God. She's praying that God will give her a miracle. And y'all, all of a sudden, Eli gave Hannah a word. I'm in verse 17. And then after verse 17 comes 18. After she received a word, the Bible says she went home, ate dinner, and she had a different look on her face. Now, here it is. She went to church depressed, but she left in carriage. But hold up. Wait a minute. She did not get pregnant. She's still barren. She still had issues. But Hannah is celebrating her because Hannah said, I receive his word. I believe his word. And I can praise him for his word. See, some people can only give God praise when it happened. But Hannah said, I believe God so much that I don't have to wait for him to do it to give him praise. I can praise him in advance. And I need to know, is there anybody this week you've been praying for God to do something in your life, but your faith is so strong that you're going to praise God in advance like you already healed, already delivered, already worked out? Can you do me a favor and give God some praise in advance? Come on, tell somebody, it's already done. That's why I'm acting like that. It's already worked out. Say, 
okay, uh, uh, tonight, and since you want to know, uh, God uh, gave me a word that he's going to answer my prayer. Yeah, yeah. But, but can you do me a favor, uh, Penina? Can you take your kids and check the Jesus up? Can, can, uh, can, can you take the kids to the playground? Because I got a word, but I got to work on it. Y'all ain't going to help me preach your head. See, see, y'all, y'all, come on, come on. Because God will give you a word, but even with the word, you got to work on it. Give me a favor, tell somebody to work on it, work on it. I don't know what God told you, but work on it. And God said he's going to give you a job. You still got to fill out an application. You have a witness in his face. He said he's going to heal you, but you still got to exercise. Still got to take your medicine. Still got to eat better. Work on it. The Bible says she worked on it. And all of a sudden, had to got up in the middle of the night and said, I want some ice cream. She, she, she said, I need some pickles in. I want to eat me, Eli. And I said, hey, what she doing eating all this different stuff? She said, I don't know. Uh, hey, hey. As a matter of fact, she said, my, my, my skirt don't fit like it used to. Oh, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. Hannah got pregnant. And the Bible says that Hannah had a son. God answered her prayer. And y'all, that's not even what I want to talk about tonight. I, I gave y'all that for free. Because we know God answers prayer. We know he'll do that. But the question becomes, what are you going to do after he answers your prayer? What are you going to do after he gives you the miracle? What are you going to do after he heals you? What are you going to do after he saves your child? What are you going to do after he brings you and turn your life around? Hannah says, after God answers your prayer. Keep your word. Oh, I wish I had something deeper than that. Come on, help me preach in here. After God answers your prayer, after God gives you what you've been praying for, you got to keep your word. Okay, let me show it to you in the text. Uh, when Hannah uh, went to the temple, she said, Lord, remember me. And if you answer my prayer and give me a son, make a vow to you. Uh -huh. I promise you uh -huh. that I'm going to give them back. Yeah. And the Bible says God answered her prayer, gave her a son, and I thought when Hannah had a son, she was going to run and show off to Penina. Uh -huh. But the Bible says as soon as God gave her a son, she kept her word. Uh -huh. She took him to the temple yeah. and she gave him back to God. Give me a favor, tell somebody, keep your word. Keep your word. Oh, come on, tell me, keep your word. And I just believe that the kingdom of God will be so much better. Church will be better. Life will be better if more people will be like Hannah and just keep your word. Oh, heavens, I wish I had a witness in this place. Because y'all, we do know we famous. We're saying what we would do before we get the blessing. But after we get it, we get amnesia. I don't know the folk like that. Uh, okay, there, there, was, there was some people, uh, maybe y'all not dispersed this, that told me if I loan you them some money, when they get paid, they, they, they said they was going to pay me back. They, 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 I said, Mother Wright, they done got paid five times. They done got a tax return check, overtime, and a stipend. But I still ain't getting my money. And y'all pray for me, Hope, because if I see him in a new outfit one more time, I'm going to have to get saved and baptized all over again because I'm going to lay some hands and I ain't talking about praying. Do I have a witness in this place? I laugh and joke, but I don't pray when it comes to my money. And I believe I'm not the only one. Keep your eye. People are tripped. They will tell you one thing before they get the blessing and turn around and do something else after they get it. But that's not the part that surprised me because we do all type of stuff to each other. But we even do it to God. We tell God what we're going to do before we get healed 
and then we do something different after we get healed. We tell God we're going to do something before we get the blessing. And then we do something different after we get it. Y'all know, matter of fact, God, if you give me this job, I'm going to pay my tithes. If you give me a car, I'll be the church on time. If you open this door, I promise you, God, if you heal me, I won't drink as much. See, this, 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 I see. Now there won't be honesty here tonight. Do I have a witness in this place? Come on, get anybody on. I'm saved, but I still need a little more Jesus. Lord, have mercy. God, if you get me out of this, I promise I won't do it no more. But some way, somehow, we end up doing. But can I give somebody some, some news tonight? Be careful about making promises to God and don't keep it. Because the same God that gave you the blessing is the same God that will take it away. The same God that gave you the promotion is the same God that will give you a demotion. The same God that put you in is the same God that take you out. Get the fair and tell somebody, keep you up. When God gives you a blessing, when God answers your prayers, keep your word. And I know this may not be what you want to hear tonight. But I'm going to tell you, keep your word. Keep, 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 keep your word. If you're not going to do it, don't make the promise. If you're not going to give God your all, don't promise your all. Keep your word. And Hannah kept her word, y'all. And as soon as God blessed her, uh, she kept her word. But this last thing, here it is. Uh, after God blessed her, answer your prayers. Not only did she keep her word, the Bible says she worshiped right there. Uh, is that what your Bible says? Here it is. Uh, when, when God answers your prayer, that's a good time to worship him uh, and give God praise. The Bible says... Uh, in verse 28, that when God blessed her with Samuel, she gave Samuel over to Eli, and she will worship him. Now, this was strange to me, because she prayed for this child, and when she finally got the child, Hannah gave him away. And I said, Hannah, how would you give your son away when you pray all your life for a son? But Hannah said, I can't get blessed by God, and then turn around and act stingy with God. Ain't gonna help me to preach. Huh? No, I can't get blessed by God huh? and then get stingy with God huh? because giving huh, is a part of worship. Huh? And when the Lord has blessed you, huh, the worst thing you can do is get stingy with God. Huh? And I'm not just talking about with your money, huh? I'm also talking about your time. Huh? I'm also talking about your gifts. Huh? The Lord bless you with a gift, huh? but you only use it when you feel like it. Huh? Whenever God you. You got to give God a worship, which means whenever you think about how good God has been, a praise should go right there. Can y'all help me close my sermon? If the Lord has answered your prayer, can you do me a favor and tell somebody a praise should go right there? When you think about when God didn't give you what you deserve, a praise
and don't make a promise. He won't keep because the same God that gave it to you is the same God. What he'll do is he'll fire you and let you keep working. <laughs> He's still laboring and working hard. And every time you get paid, something breaks so you can't enjoy it. Something go wrong. And you're trying to figure out how are people who are working less than me have more than me? They're not working as hard as me, but they have way more than me. Maybe, just maybe. Because they kept their word. And when you keep your word, God will take say, you don't need a stroller. You need a daycare. <laughs> He'll give you more than you can handle. And y'all don't, don't have to believe me. I just need at least five witnesses who will testify. When you give God your best, God will start blessing you in ways. Come on, you don't have a witness in here tonight. When you serve God the way you're supposed to serve him, blessings will come from places you wouldn't even expect it. Has the Lord blessed anybody in here tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God, for, for, for somebody, here it is. The accident could have killed you. You wasn't supposed to make it off the operating team. Instead of the ambulance taking you to the emergency room, it was supposed to drop you off at the mall. But God stepped in and said, I still have work for you to do. I still have something for you to do. God has given you more time because he need a witness. He need a worship. That's why nobody should ever have to beg some of us to worship God because all we need is a flashback of how good God has been. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're standing all over the sanctuary. We're standing.